So it gives me great pleasure today to be with our new uh, central defender, Matt Heath. Welcome, Matt. Hello there, Pete. <laughs> so let's get started. You know, first yeah. obvious question has to be, how are you enjoying life at Harrogate Town at the moment? Honestly, it's, um, I'm enjoying it so much. Uh, live here in Longmorsen, which is in between York and Weatherby. Um, so it's obviously not too far away for me to travel to get to the home games. Um, and yeah, with the results going the way they are and um, pushing up to get in the playoffs and everyone's really excited and the form's great, everyone's been making me feel really welcome. So yeah, I can't, I've not got one grumble about it at all. Yeah, really, really good. That's fantastic. Yeah. How did you, you know, how did it come about that you joined Harrogate Town? Because obviously at 32 years of age, yeah. you were obviously in the league and you surprised a lot of people by sort of making the drop down to normal league football. But how did the chance to join Harrogate Town happen for you? Um, well, in the summer, I left Colchester. Um, we decided to move back up to this area where we owned a house already from our previous time at Leeds United. Um, my wife sorted herself with a, a job out in, in the local vets up in Weatherby and I would have liked to have uh, joined a local club in the league preferably at the beginning of the season um, you know, within driving distance. Unfortunately for me I found it a lot harder to, to find somewhere and it just seems like in, in the actual football league there's, there's not a lot of contracts and there's not a lot of money flying about um, so managers got to use a smaller squad, smaller budget um, so I luckily got a chance to go down to Northampton and work with an old manager, Eddie Boothroyd, there. Um, prior to that as well, I did speak to Simon in, in the summer and unfortunately for me at that time, he, he had it, all his squad sorted and he just said, keep in touch and we'll, we'll keep tabs on each other. So it probably really stemmed from there. So when I, my contract finished at Northampton, I, I gave him another bell and I think it was just perfect timing where... <laughs> Um, Frank C had got injured and they were in need of a, maybe another centre half in the squad. Um, it was on the end of a few defeats, so it all fell into place really. Fantastic. Mm. Now I'm just going to have to say before we continue that Matt has got the most gorgeous <laughs> new puppy down here. So if you do hear any noise in the background, <laughs> it's just Polly, but she's absolutely lovely. So she might even get a shot on camera a later. <laughs> so. Yeah, you've dropped down into non-league football. You know, yeah. What are your first impressions of the non-league game? Um, honestly, I think it's a really good standard. Uh, we've played quite a few of the top teams in, in this division already and we've held our own. Um, so it's good to gauge and, and work out how we are in comparison to the, to the top teams. Um, we also think some of the lower teams in, in the league probably play the better football. I um, don't know if that, that's showing that if you try and pass a ball around, it doesn't work. But I think maybe, you know, uh, Histon and uh, Bradford tried to pass a ball around really well. The same with Staley Bridge as well. So um, I do, I've been quite impressed with the, with the standard. And I'm sure it's not going to be too different to the standard that you would come up against in the league above. Now, you've, we've just obviously played Boston United, yeah. uh, a 4-0 win, but yeah. to say it was a bizarre game is probably an understatement. Yeah. I mean, obviously as a pro, you've probably taken play, uh, part in a fair few strange games, but how mm. does that one rate? Honestly, Pete, never ever played in one like it. I've never <laughs> played in a game where the idea of the game was to keep the ball away from the opponent and not go towards goal. Um, really bizarre. It would have been a great game to have... You know, just gone and tried to get as many goals as we could, but due to the circumstances, we decided to try and stay away from making any contact with their players. So, <laughs> um, after we thought that there was something fishy going on, we decided to, you know, not give them the chance of a, an easy contact injury. Um, and in the end, someone did pull up with a bit of cramp. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, bizarre game, but really happy that it ended and we, we got the three points. Can we start at like the final straight now? I mean, obviously <coughs> we're in sixth position, but looking like we can pounce on at least a couple of teams hopefully this mm. weekend. I mean, obviously one of them being Brackley, so if yeah. we beat them, we'll actually leapfrog above them. You know, would you say, again, using the experience that you got, that that is a really good position to be in as a team, or would you rather be higher up? How do no, you view it? I, yeah, I think you can view it a couple of ways. Obviously, it would be nice to have the points on the board and, and be a lot higher up the league table, but there's people always say there's a team that come from lower down to make the playoffs, and 
And I just think <coughs> if you get on a, a little bit of a winning streak and on a roll, the team that does get into the playoffs go in there with the momentum and um, hopefully that can be us this year. I know we've got a lot of games to go. We've got another 14 or so games, there, yeah. roughly. Um, so there's a there's a long way to go and a lot of time that we've got to keep keep this good run and this good form up. But um, yeah, it's a great position to be in and for all the teams above us to be looking over their shoulder and and we know that a few other teams like Altrincham uh, have got a good chance of, of getting in there as well. So um, starting on Saturday, it'll be nice to try and get one over on one of the other promotion rivals. What's the, the mood like in the changing room at the moment? Because we always hear the, the, the often news saying, you know, the manager's got the changing room. Mm. You know, is, is that really the case at Harrogate Town? I think so, yeah. Like, um, comparing to teams uh, and squads that I've been with before, um, there's always been, you would call them like cliques or um, divisions in, in the squad where people hang around with other people and, and, and they don't seem to you know, get on really, but coming into this changing room at Harrogate and I'm not just saying it because I'm here and because I want everyone to be happy but everyone seems to be you know pulling in the right direction together and everyone seems to have a laugh and a joke with each other when when the time's right and and everyone in the squad wants to win and come Saturday and when the whistle starts everyone's pulling in the right direction whether they're in the starting 11 on the bench or in, injuries or just in the, in the squad so you can say that the manager's got the change room but he, he really has got everyone pulling in the right direction which is um, you would think that it's essential but it doesn't happen all the time <laughs> brilliant uh, right what I want to do now Matt is sort of um, take you a bit on you know back throughout your career yeah because obviously looking at the stats and the teams that you've played for you've got a pretty impressive right uh, CV to say the least so Leicester born and bred yep and obviously had the chance to play for your home team. Mm -hmm. You know, what's that like as a child, you know, growing up, mm. getting that chance, you know, getting the call up, sort of say, come and play for Leicester City? Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, um, I was a Leicester fan as a, a young lad growing up. Uh, me and my dad, we went to watch <coughs> um, numerous games at Filbert Street and then <coughs> to uh, get the chance to play in their, they would call it their academy, I suppose, now, wouldn't they? Uh, School of Excellence, as it was back, <laughs> back in the day. Um, you know, dream come true. Me, me, and a few of my, you know, teammates at Sunday League level, we all got in, and um, it just progressed from there. Really, each year by year, you, you get asked to go back, and until it's time for the decisions made on um, YTS schemes, um, and yeah, it, it went from there. Really, just getting the chance to play for the youth team, then the reserve team, and then. As things obviously progress well for me, um, just getting a chance to play for the first team as well. I think it's a little bit of luck along the way as well with managers that want that like you. I know you're laughing, but it <laughs> really is, a, especially for young lads coming through and breaking through. You, you need to be in the right place at the right time. And fortunately for me, it worked well at Leicester for me. And I think of this, we can all see the stability you brought to our back line. So I think mm -hmm. luck probably doesn't count. It it's does. I oh, know it does, Pete. It does, <laughs> especially when you. In a team that's high up in Championship, Premier League, um, you don't get it as often nowadays where um, young lads, especially centre-halves, get a chance in the first team. So um, I was lucky that I had a manager that had faith in me and, and wanted me to do well. Now, you also, you know, you've, you've played in the Premier League, so you have played at the highest level of English football. I mean, yeah. what was that like for you walking out for the first time, Leicester City play in the Premier League? <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, Dream come true, cliche, but it, it really was to play for your hometown club and to play in the top league as well. It was all a little bit surreal at the time and it took me quite a few games to get used to it. I think I got a couple of appearances and then got sent out on loan to toughen up or to learn the game a little bit more. Um, and that really did do me a, a world of good going down to Stockport. And they, they were in League One at the time, or up to Stockport from Leicester. Um, but yeah, it was... You know, really good to play against all the players that I've had a chance to play against and, and play with as well. There's some been some great players at Leicester at the time that were um, my teammates. So uh, yeah, really fortunate to learn from from everyone else. Now you also popped up with a few goals as well at Leicester. Mm -hmm. You know, which one would you say was probably the most <laughs> favourite or your, you know the most popular one that you scored? Um, I, I, I score. I can remember scoring uh, at both ends once in a home game against Ipswich. Um, unfortunately, it was me who put it in the back of the net to make it tall in the last few minutes. But I scored a, 
earlier on in that game I, I scored a, a it was probably my only shot I've ever had from outside the area but <laughs> that managed to go in and um, looking back at it now as well there was a lad in the Ipswich team in Westlake who I later on became teammates with at uh, Leeds and still a good friend now and he scored in that game also so it's quite a good game to look back on now you, you can you can tell what happened <laughs> now you moved obviously from Leicester over to Coventry City mm. um, and made quite a few appearances there I think that was 2005-2007 you yeah. were there I mean what was that like I mean because another again another big club or another yeah. as I say the, the, the sleeping giant that awful time yeah I year. mean it was it was good in a sense that it was only half an hour from my house where I was living in Leicester, so I didn't have to relocate. Um, it was actually, like I said about managers liking you, it was Mickey Adams, who was manager at Leicester. He got sacked, went over to Coventry, and he asked me to go over to Coventry with him as well. So it was nice to um, know the management, and uh, a couple of players also went in the same direction. So I knew a few people around, but yeah, it was an absolute massive club. It was the season where they first joined, uh, started playing in the Rico Arena. Um, not so much now, but that was the first season, so it was great to go into a new stadium at the start of the season and um, kick the season off there. I th- don't think we uh, had a great season the first season I was there, but um, you know, real good experience to be um, playing for another big club like that. Fantastic. Mm. Then, of course, it was the spell with the Mighty Whites, Leeds yes. United, obviously a, a local club for you now. Yeah. Um, Again, another massive club, <laughs> not only you know, a reputation statue, and obviously yeah. the crowd at Ellen Road is absolutely amazing. Tell you, me about it. You can't, you can't afford it. They're away fans as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> like Coventry, Leicester, you could say are good followers, but Leeds, totally different level. <laughs> what was I mean? What was that like for you? I mean, because obviously, I mean, Ellen Road is known as being such a not a ferocious place, but well, probably ferocious in the, the, the support. You know, the well, fans. Be- before joining, I'd never been to Leeds or played at Leeds <laughs> um, so I was probably a little bit naive in the sense of I'm not I wasn't sure about the history and I can remember being called into the office at Coventry City and the manager was under a bit of pressure at the time needed to make some changes and he said to me look um, Leeds United want you on loan and I was a little bit uh, <laughs> do I really want to go there I mean I can stay fighting for my place at Coventry and I, I must have pulled the same faces I'm doing now and he went <laughs> What are you doing? What a club they are! Get there! <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I got myself on the M1, went up there, and as soon as I turned up at the training ground, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Obviously, built for when they're in the Champions League, mm. all the facilities you could ever imagine they've got. Um, and yeah, once again, really honoured to play for another big club like Leeds. Now, you made the move, because uh, originally you went on loan, like mm-hmm. you said, and then you made the, lo- uh, the move permanent. And went on to make again, probably about over. I think it's like over fifty odd yeah. appearances. Yeah. Became a fan's favourite yeah. at Ellen Road. Yeah. Um, again, you know, what would you say was your highlight of that? You know, at that period. Um, well, in that that season that we're talking about there, when I joined permanently, it was a year when they'd been relegated mm. to League One. Um, all the financial difficulties that they'd come under, and yeah. we started off with. Uh, points deduction minus 15 points deduction um, created such a good atmosphere within the squad within the club that it was us against everybody else everyone was against us it wasn't fair and I think after winning the first game which I scored in which probably helped the fans <laughs> liking me a little bit <laughs> um, we went on a massive run and cleared the 15 points deduction after five games it was and we ended up getting up into the actual proper promotion places by November, December. So it was a, you know, it was a great, great run that we went on. And um, unfortunately it, it went a little bit sour. And uh, Gus Poyer, who was the assistant manager left, he went to Tottenham um, a little bit later on. Dennis Wise left as well, who was obviously them two as a Chelsea pairing were good management. Mm. And, and then I left. <laughs> so I'm not sure what happened after that. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Going back to that um, 15 point deduction, mm. I mean, it's very rare that a team actually sh- is able to clear it that quickly. Mm. I think probably Leeds, in, in that instance, were one of the few yeah. that have actually managed to do that. Yeah. I mean, the pride that you guys must have been feeling at that point, you know, five games into the season, the deduction has yeah. gone, and then you're climbing up the table. Then we're climbing. It must it, have been immense. It was brilliant looking at, like, we were on such a good run that we were winning. I, th- I think we probably won 
nine out of the first ten games. And yeah, you can see that. Um, <coughs> you look at the table in the paper, you can see us climbing up the league. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And I think we had a bit of a fear factor of all the, you know, the teams coming to Ellen Road with the support, with um, um, the fan base we had, and we we did have some good players at the time as well. I remember we we signed to Andre Flo, who came off the bench every week and scored and <laughs> you know pl- players that were playing against him must have been you know shivering and quaking in their boots as he was an absolutely brilliant player but that's the kind of players that Leeds could attract even though they're in League One yeah. and I think it probably helped that he was a friend of the manager <laughs> <laughs> not saying anything <laughs> <laughs> next club would be Colchester United yeah and again um you became very, very popular down there. I mean, yeah. I've actually got a, a couple of friends that are Colchester fans. Have you? And they've said, you know, how's Matt doing? They also want to know how you're doing. Yeah. So it just shows, obviously, how well you were yeah, you brilliant. were like down there. Um, and obviously, that became the club, um, at the moment, obviously, of course, you never know what's going to happen with, uh, with town, yeah. that you made the most appearances for. Yeah. And I would imagine as well that, you, you know, you've had some really good times down there. Yeah, definitely. What was the game was it like? I mean, because obviously you've left Leeds United mm. and you've gone to Colchester. You know, what was it like for you in that sort of like transitional period? Um, well, at the time, I, I left Leeds and who were in League One and Colchester actually in the Championship. So it was, once again, another good opportunity for me. They were bottom and they were quite a few points adrift, but it was a good opportunity to go to play in the higher league again. Um, they had players like Teddy Sheringham had joined there and um, they had a number of very good players and there was a chance that we could have got out of trouble and stayed up but we obviously didn't we got relegated and it was um, a club that were totally different to Leeds it was family orientated the the fa- ev- everyone knew all the hardcore fans you, by the time I left there after five six seasons I made many friends with the fans that were there as well you got to know everyone by first name so it's totally different in that sense and thoroughly enjoyed my time down there like I was there for like I said five six years so um, you're going to become quite attached to to the club and I still want them to do very well now especially with the manager that they've got Joe Dunn who when I signed he was working in the reserves youth team he's done everything since I've been there and he played a number of games for Colchester as well so for a player and a coach like Joe to have the chance to, to coach the team that he's been at for a number of years I just hope they all really do well Brilliant Yeah you you speak, you know, very passionately about all the clubs that you played for. Mm. I mean, it seems, seems to be that you know every career step that you made, you, you know, you're very proud of. Yeah. Your final club, I mean, you had a couple of lone ones at Brighton and Southend, but yeah. your, your final sort of like four time club, so to speak, was Northampton Town. Yeah. And that was at the beginning of uh, the 2013 season. Mm-hmm. Um, now, how did that move happen? Because again, you know. I think you've surprised quite a few people in this perspective, you know, because you are still young. Thirty-two is not a, you know, you see like Ryan Giggs, who's four hundred and seventy-one now, and he, he's still playing, isn't he? You know, yeah. and I think you know everyone sort of thought, you know, how come you know Matt's sort of going this way when you could stop and still be going up again? Oh uh, well, uh, when I left Colchester, um, I it was a summer, probably the first summer I ever had as a football player where I didn't know where I was going to be playing my football at the start of the season and I think it's probably due to the climate that mm. the financial climate that football is um, under a little bit of pressure as well at the minute but I went into the summer <coughs> with a trial down at Oxford United so I, I went and played for uh, or trained with them for three weeks and it didn't work out for me so I was left um, with a week or two to go to the start of the season I was unattached and I didn't have any club um, I had a couple of trial games coming up for a couple of conference teams when I, I got a phone call from A.D. Booth who was manager um, an ex-manager as well because he was manager at Colchester he just said we, we, we've we got an injury at centre half do you want to come down and play a game for us it was against Leicester as well the friendly game <laughs> so I went down and he uh, yeah, he offered me something short term um, and at the time I, I had no other options to go to another league club anyway so I thought it's two hours drive away but I could commute up and down the motorway not every day I could stay with family in Leicester during the week but and um, do the travelling so that's that's what I did <laughs> Fantastic, as I said the rest is history you joined us Yep. 
you um you broke your duck. You finally got the goal against uh, Hendersford. Mm. Um, and the look on your face when you scored, I think one of the pictures that I put up on the website sort of shows this this sheer you know ecstasy of scoring. You know, yeah. what was it like for you? It's not been a, it's been a long time since I scored a goal. <laughs> I didn't think I scored last season. Um, so it's been over a year since I scored, and it was nice to. I think it was a goal that made it two 0 in the game. Yeah. Was it? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So um, yeah, it just took a little bit of pressure off the lads. It was a big game against one of our promotion rivals. So. Um, and it was once again something we worked on in training, the, the, the free kicks in the corners. So um, it was just great. It's good to score a goal, especially when you're a defender and help out, help out the lads. So um, yeah, I think everyone enjoys scoring, don't they? <laughs> they do indeed. Yeah. The they always say, I mean, especially goalkeepers, that a clean sheet is mm. is worth in essence them scoring a goal. Is that the same for you as well? Yeah. You, know, you you guys love clean sheets, obviously, but you know what. In essence, you know, what does it feel like as a unit to know that you know you've kept that clean sheet? Yeah, it's it's really good, and uh, and at the minute we've got four lads um, who've played a lot of games together now, um, bar Dwayne at Histon, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we we're starting to know each other's game really well, um, and that's probably showing now as we've had a couple of clean sheets in the last three games as well, um, and yeah, we obviously. We like to help out going forward, going up for corners, or the fullbacks like to kind of join in and get their crosses in. But mm. at the end of the day, we're the defenders, and we like to stop stop the opposition from scoring. And and, and I know it's a whole team game, and it, it start defending starts from the front, and it's the pressure the forwards put on, and and the lads in midfield work tirelessly for to help out as well, um, especially the lads in the centre. So it, it is, it's a team effort, but. At the end of the day, that's our main goal as a defender to to keep clean sheets. You came to the club um, probably two thirds into the season. Yeah. How difficult is it for you? On you know, not just at Harrogate Town, but obviously the other clubs that you play for as well. You know, when you sort of had to join another club mid-season. You know, mm. how difficult do you find it to sort of like slip into the team? Because as you said, you know, teams at that stage are normally played quite a few games together. They know yeah. each other's style. Then they've got another body coming in. Yeah. But for us, looking sort of from the sidelines, it seems like you've just slotted in, you know, perfectly like it. That's a, how a it felt, place. honestly, Pete. Like the lads have been um, very welcoming. Um, like I say, everyone's in the, pulling in the same direction, so that wasn't a problem. Getting involved there, um, all the lads, have, like I say, made me feel welcome and made me feel part of the team straight away. And and it does help that you get off to a good start with with the results as well. So. Um, looking at it from the result point of view, um, we couldn't have wished for it to go any better since I've joined. So um, I think all the, all them aspects add up, and and if it looks like I've slid into the team really well, then um, yeah, it feels like that as well. It's it's been really good, and um, long may it continue. Indeed. Yeah. Don't think anyone's going to argue with that. No. Right, stepping off the pitch at the moment, yeah. um, recently you uh, were the guest coach at the oh, soccer yeah. school that yeah. we, um, we held. <laughs> And I, I had the pleasure of obviously being there on the last day when it decided to actually rain the one day that uh, we could have done with the sunshine for the, for the cameras. Um, but the fun that I noticed that you were having with the kids and that the kids were obviously responding to what you were saying, yeah. you know, what was that like for you? Yeah, it's, um, it's something that I'm passionate about, wanting to get into, um, you know, passing my knowledge on to, to children, like all ages really, going from, I think we, the youngest were probably six, seven yeah. years old, weren't they, that day? Yeah. Um, up to 11 years old but um, going a little bit higher age from that I just want to be able to pass on my knowledge I want to be able to be part of you know kids enjoying playing football and um, you know just getting used to playing with the football um, and you know improving the skills and having a good time as well so um, a any opportunity that I get I did I've done a um, my coaching badges down at Colchester as well and helped out with their academy when, when I could um, and I'm doing a, a football coaching degree as well so that could give me opportunities to get into um, you know P teaching maybe further down the line in my career but um, yeah it's just something I'm passionate about and I, I want to it's all I've known really playing football and to go into a different profession seems a little bit silly to me at the minute so I think I'd I want to work towards what I, I like doing and um, you know if I can help out like I did the other day along the way then so be it. 
you seem to be very community orientated. I mean, I know mm -hmm. the um, one of the things that Simon obviously wants you to get involved is on the community side. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a club at our level, how important do you think the community is to uh, you know like non-league clubs like us? Yeah, I think it it's going to be massive, isn't it, Pete? I mean, they're going to be if we're looking at kids at uh, sixteen and below, they're going to be the supporters of the future. And I know it's probably everyone says it, and it's an e easy way to look at things, but it's the truth as well. And um, as we were talking before camera, you say you've got a bunch of lads who are 15 to 18 years old that like following the club and um, they are, they're going to be there for years and years and years and they're hopefully going to bring their kids and so on and so on and, and then on the other side of things if you can get the local talent, talented footballers in and amongst the club and if they you know, are good enough to play for the club as well, it's going to benefit the club that way. So there's a lot of different angles you can look at and um, for a town like Harrogate and the surrounding areas, well, I know we've got Leeds and maybe York that are not too far away, but um, there's a big area, isn't there, in Harrogate to, you know, to tap into. So I think it is quite important for, for the club to get in the schools around the area. I mean, Simon does place a lot of emphasis on sort of like the local footballers. We've got obviously Adam Novakoski, mm -hmm. um, Connor Sellers, and uh, a few other players. You know, all, yeah. all Harrogate sort of leads based. Yeah. Do you think that that's uh, you know it's a necessity for clubs of our, you know our level to, to get that local talent in? You know, and what would you do yeah. if you had the chance to sort of like promote that? What would you say? Yeah, I'd, obviously it's not a necessity because the team would work if you didn't have local players in but I think it's important to have a core of players in the changing room that are local mm. that um, don't have to travel far um, that like the area, love the area and they want to do well for the, for the team I just think it helps bond the team atmosphere together a little bit and we have we've got a number of players who are lead, like you said Leeds, we've got Craig in goal as well and Dom, yeah. Dom's Leeds based um, and with me just living up the road now, even though I'm not a Yorkshire lad. <laughs> um, we'll let you off. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but I think it is, it is quite important. And, and I think as, as Simon obviously is, is looking at things, I think he knows it's quite important to get and, and keep the core of the squad. But then saying that, a lot of our other players, are, they don't live far away as well. Mm. So um, I think we've got quite a few Doncaster, Manchester base. So it is we. We're, we're quite a close-knit team at the minute, and I know I've not been there that long, but um, things seem to be going, and, you know, running along and ticking just smoothly at the minute. <laughs> going to mention the subject now that most players probably hold their breath out and think, oh, crikey, but referees. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been quite impressed with them at the minute, especially the one on Saturday. Yeah. I think he knew what was going on and he helped everyone out. But yeah, there's only been one or two that I've had a little bit of a moan at. <laughs> Fair enough, we're out, we'll get off that subject. <laughs> <laughs> now, you joined us obviously at the right time because we've made the West Riding County yeah. Cup, so there's a cup final on the um, uh, the horizon. Some people sort of moan at these kind of competitions, I think they, they get labelled sort of like the Mickey Mouse competitions, right. but you know, for you guys in the team, mm. it's got to be important because obviously it's, it's a final, you know, yeah. it's a chance to get some silverware. Yeah. You know, so how do, how do you vote, view it? As, as a professional, you played in the FA Cups, you played in the League Cups. Yeah. You know, how, how do you view these kind of competitions? Well, it's, it's good for team morale, isn't it? If we go, I'm not sure when the final is, do you know? We haven't been told No, I've not been told yet. But if we go and we win the final and we've got some silverware, it's not going to do the club any harm at all. It's going to be a positive. So, um, you know, whenever this final is, <laughs> we want to win it. Um, for me personally, I've not played in any round, so I, I probably feel like it should be down to the people that, have been playing in, in the competition and to get the chance to play it, I think it's at Bradford's ground as well. Yeah. But for the club, it's a uh, you know we, we're not going to go into it not wanting to win, <laughs> and you might people might look at it as a Mickey Mouse so-called competition, but um, football match, football match, and everyone likes to play and everyone likes to win, so I don't see why not. <laughs> well, too right, yeah. too right. We're also coming out to the back straight of the season. Mm -hmm. and there's uh, still a few um, interesting games to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you guys as a team sort of sat down up to the fixture list and said, oh, you know, that is going to be a great game, that's going to be a crunch tie, that, or is it just a case of every game as it comes, you know, we're going to treat it as the, um, like a cup final, so to speak? Yeah, I think as a club we've not sat down, um, we've not analysed the fixtures, um, 
maybe people individually have. I know I've looked at them and tried to work out how many points we need to make the playoffs or whatever. Um, but I think it's one of them things where we don't need to talk about it. We're on a good run at the minute. Um, I think the gaffer just says, <laughs> you know, keep what you're doing and go again and the same intensity, the same atmosphere in, in the squad. And um, it's, I suppose it's quite a nice situation for him to be in at the minute. So there's no need to sit down and say this is a big game and put added pressure on ourselves. Um, but we all know that if we're playing against a, um, a promotion rival, then it is a massive game. Like we have, like you say, we've got a few coming up um, against teams up there. But we need to beat them to get in, in the playoffs. So I'm sure they'd rather... <laughs> not be playing us. <laughs> well, we're top of the form league at the moment, mm-hmm. so you know. Exactly. Obviously, something in that. Um, the final game of the season mm-hmm. got to be one that you're interested in. It's Stockport County, Ooh. and of course, you've yep. obviously been as a player there. Mm. You know, will there be any sentiment going back to a? Uh, um, I was only there for a month or so. So. <laughs> oh, in that case. No, no. not really any sentiment. <laughs> obviously, it's a you know a former league club, and it wasn't too long ago. Mm. Um, got a lot of history and it's a away game isn't it yes the last one yeah so it'd be nice for us to go to um one of the bigger grounds or well, probably the biggest ground in our league i'm guessing yeah um and yeah it'd be might nice. have tough would you saying that but yeah we don't even <laughs> well <laughs> yeah but um yeah it'd be nice to be going there and not having to get a result to to uh, make a difference in the uh, final league position wouldn't it so um they would just like you say concentrate on each game at a time, like people say, <laughs> um, and then we'll see where we get to. Has it surprised you in some respects, speaking about Stockport? I mean, because they, they, they've fallen dramatically. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, like you said, they were in mm. the Championship. They were, at one stage, mm. I think, pushing for the players into the Premiership. And then, you know, four or five years down the line, they find themselves in the, the Conference North. I mean, yeah. as, a, as again, as a professional, I mean, in some respects, that's got to be frightening to see a club of that magnitude. Yeah, that it I, was being what it is now. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm not, I'm not kept tabs on on the actual club, and I'm not sure the reasonings behind their decline. Um, obviously, it's got probably due to some kind of financial reasons. They can't be that bad of players to fall <laughs> down that many leagues. So, um, I'm sure there's um, a lot of clubs in the same situation mm. that are, you know, struggling financially, and and at least they're in existence still. Some clubs are struggling to. To keep that as well, so um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they'll be looking to uh, push back on and um, starting from next season. I would say trying to work their way back up as well. I mean, is that one of the things that's impressive about having it at time? I mean, obviously, it's a very well run ship. I mean, mm. we, we've had the, the documentation you now. We've known Irving's come on board as a chairman mm. and helped us, you know, greatly. But as a player, sort of like looking outwards at first looking into Harrogate Town yeah. and also coming to join yeah. you know what were your impressions of the club in that respect you know what, what did you see as the overall package um, well, to be honest before joining I hadn't been to any games um, obviously knew of the club I knew of the town and um, after speaking with the manager as well earlier in the season I knew that it was a very well run club and um, had the right ethics and the right morals towards uh, you know wanting to improve and help the local community and whatever and um, just to see and to know that they've put a, you know, a lot of money into getting the pitch nice and making the ground nice I think that there are some plans to improve the ground facilities as well yeah is that right? new stand going in yeah the there you season. go so I suppose it's um, like you say they're, they're wanting to put the money in the right places and, and, and run the club like it, it, it should be run and not use all the money just to try and get the better players and you know go for a flip of a coin whether they <laughs> they make it or they don't so um, yeah it's obviously great to be part of a team that, that ha- have that all behind them Fantastic. the thing about football at the moment um, it, well like you said you, you've alluded to as well several times it, it's the money mm. um, and we've seen the Wayne Rooney contract this this week. I mean, that is an amazing amount of money. Something like three hundred thousand pound a week. Yeah. <laughs> As again, you know, someone that's been in the game, yeah. played at the highest level. Do you think that the money part of it in that respect is starting to take over? Is it something that you think, oh, you know, this could be a detriment to the game? Um, no, like my opinion would be that the the, the players that 
are earning that amount of money, I, I imagine that whether it be <laughs> hundred grand a week or three hundred grand a week, I'm sure it doesn't make a difference to their life and their lifestyle. I mean, if you're looking at players, you know, going from five hundred pound a week to a couple of grand a week, that's a massive difference in how they how a player could could live. And you would hope that players, in that sense, it wouldn't change their lifestyle and it wouldn't change their hunger for the game. Um, these top class players, if they wanted to financially, they could retire any day of the week, but they don't. They they carry on playing, they carry on working hard, um, and it's not their fault that the amount of money that's being pumped into the top of you know, the Champions League, the Premier League, it's not their fault that they're the better players in the world and they're receiving it. They obviously it's nice for them, but um yeah, and I'm not sure if it's gonna I'm sure it's gonna ruin the the gap in 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 the the ability levels of the clubs and the top four or five are always going to be the top four or five for a number of years now unless you get a a very good manager with an up and coming uh, up and coming club but um, it does make it interesting watching all the best players in the Premier League doesn't it each week yeah, <laughs> definitely one of the questions I asked you in the program and um, one that I thought you gave a, um, an absolute um, excellent answer for was the one about the you know the talent dropping through the leagues. Because those non-league clubs we've seen, you know, we've seen a lot more in the, probably the last four or five years. Yeah. Um, clubs not only are willing to send, you know, decent youngsters and in case, in, in some cases, seasoned pros on uh, a loan to our level. Right. I mean, we had Chris Brass a couple of years ago from York City, mm. who was again just a step above, mm. you know, what we've seen on the pitch. Um, if you were in Mr. Blatter's shoes mm -hmm. or Mr. Platini's, whichever one you'd like. And you had the chance to make one change to the English uh, game. I remember moment. the question now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what would you do? I mean, because again, you've got that insight, you know, you've played the game. Yeah. And we've seen all these wonderful players come down to our level now. But it does make you fearful. And there's all this talk about, oh, the English game suffers because there's too many foreigners here or this or that. Or I think it does, though, doesn't it? I think yeah. I might have said this in the programme as well. But I think it is due to, like everyone's saying, if you had more English born English bred players playing in the top leagues or playing in the championship then it's going to help the country out it's going to help mm. the, well, the national team out um, and if they could kind of introduce some kind of rule where they have to have a certain amount of homegrown talented players playing in their starting 11 or their 16 man squad then I'm sure it'll be an e for me it seems like an easy first starting step to take yeah. to help the national team and to help um, you know England the English clubs in a whole and I'm sure that then there'll be a lot more emphasis going on to the academies going on to the the youth structure at the clubs where they'll they need to produce the talent to go into their first team so I just I can't see a negative towards it yeah. there's been that thing about people said you know oh um Put a limit on the foreigners, you know. Say it's got, there's got to be six English players in the mm. team to start off with. There's got to be a maximum of four, you know, this or the other. Yeah. And I believe that certain countries now are starting to bring that in. And we did have it in England a few years ago, if, if memory serves. Right. Um, you know, is that something that you would bring back? You know, yeah. they say, you know, you mentioned in the English team, we've got the World Cup coming up soon. We all know that English football at the moment, at the highest level, is one of those Jekyll and Hyde yeah. things at the moment. I mean, would you say that's fair? Put a limit on. Um. Oh yeah. Put. A limit or like you say the other way around have so many Eng or British players playing um, and it's a weird one as well because you don't see many English players playing in the Italian leagues or the Spanish leagues do you and the amount of Italian Spanish people South Americans playing in our league um, is frightening so um, you've got all these English players fighting for for the for the contracts in, in the club and and at the end of the day, it's just going to affect the young lads coming through at youth team level that there is no spaces and there's no money and no contracts available for them. So it's going to affect everyone all the way down. And um, yeah, I think between me and you, I think we've got it sorted, haven't we? By doing that thing. <laughs> we should get on to Mr. Hodgson yeah, straight away, I think. Yes, yeah, we'll give him an email. Eh? <laughs> right, finally, the last question I want to ask yeah. is probably the one that um, a lot of people want to know the answer to. We hear an awful lot about um, Adam Nowakowski's choice of music <laughs> pre-match. Right. Is it as bad as it sounds? Do you know what? I don't mind that, actually. <laughs> uh, um, he gets a party going a little bit. Um, there's one or two that, that contribute. and uh, But it's working at the minute, so let's... Uh, he does like, like mm, 
Venga boys and a few <laughs> um, village people, stuff like that. But, you know, we'll leave him to it. Oh, his street has just gone down, I think, now. <laughs> Matt, it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Cheers, Thank mate. you very much Thank for you. taking the time out to do this. Cheers, mate. And good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much.